do we help people keep their pieces from getting twisted and distorted? Two words, support and scaffolding. And what we have here is prongs that are needed by the setter to create what we call a claw around this large uh, center stone. A stone this size could be worth upwards of $25,000, $30,000, depending on the quality of the diamond. So you better have enough metal there to hold it. The problem is building something like this and casting something like this is very dangerous because, again, of the height and width ratio. To solve this problem, you, you need to create a support structure around it. The best way to create a support structure for this is basically just to put an X on top. And I'm sure for different projects you can come up with different uh, patterns. And whatever the width on top is, go slightly less than that and then just make a support. Create, uh, let's see, I'm going to pipe it in this instance, let's go 0.85. And there you go. And then when you boolean this together, when you export this, this structure here, will hold the prongs together and give you a much better casting. Also, the casting can put a sprue in this area here to feed all of this. We have seen one way of putting on support to support a head that has very long prongs. But there's other situations where scaffolding or supports might be needed. One of them is in if you have a ring that is in two pieces and the bottom part, the shank, isn't connected. It's always best if you can put some kind of support in between the two ends of the ring therefore ensuring it doesn't pull apart during casting something like this would be perfect just something across the bottom to hold it together for while it's casting or while it's being built another situation is when you have small parts such as this pear shape setting the same thing would apply where you would put some form of support to support these prongs for when they're being taken out of the machine or being cast. In Rhino you would use something called the pipe command where the caps are round and the diameter. Now it's important how thick the supports are. They should not be thicker than the prongs. What happens is in, if the supports themselves are a lot thicker than the prongs, when everything solidifies, it will contract and crack the piece, crack the prong itself, the part that we actually need. So before you pipe it, it would be wise if you do a diameter check on the prong, and in this case it's one millimeter, so you should go no higher than 0.9 if you must, 0.95, but not higher than that. So we're going to pick both prongs and we're going to pipe it in diameter of 0.9. If that seems too thick, fine, you can just bring it down to 0.85. And this would be a good way of supporting this structure. But on a single setting like this, it's also important that they have something to hold on to. So it's also good and recommended that you put some type of support. Let's make that a little larger. Bring that up. And that would be a perfect situation for this setting and also to sprue to. So those are great examples of keeping your pieces straight. But what about bigger parts like a angle? You still have to support them, but it has to be done in a different way. Another situation is if you have big bangles like this, or cuffs, where there's a lot of open space in between. What I did is I pre-arranged this with some round circles. Now if we go to our front viewport, you could see that how they intersect in between. I'm going to pick all of the circles and I'm going to extrude in both directions. If we go to our right viewport, right into there. Now this is ideal, but sometimes you might have a mechanism within the bangle or the cuff itself, so it, you cannot put a sprue there. Then what I would recommend is if you take it and put it towards the bottom, something like this. 
and extend it out a little bit. Okay. All right. So let's pick everything we made except for that. And let's stretch it. And this would also suffice if you have something like this in intervals, as you see here, to support the piece. That way it doesn't stretch out or it doesn't collapse under the weight of casting or being taken out of the machine. You're helping yourself when you, when you do these little things that one will give you a better ring and two, and a better product for you to work on to finish for your client. In summary, we covered supports for settings in rings, supporting open shanks, supporting small settings, and building brace supports for your cuffs and bangles. Hi guys, thanks for watching. Please look for other videos in this series and learn how to perfect your trade. trade.